us to open this great event. I'd like to say a few words to begin with about how I view the significance, not only of this event, but the whole cricket initiative at IMT. And what I'd like to demonstrate is that the significance of this initiative and the, and the projects that you are doing is far greater than you probably imagine. It has greater significance for you as individuals. It has greater significance for IMT. It has greater significance for India, and I believe it has a global significance. It is a unique initiative, and the fact that it was inaugurated by the current president of India, I think, is an indication of the importance with which it is held. I have not seen a program like this in my wide travels. I've seen projects, but I have not seen any initiative like this on such a, an institution-wide level. And I'd like to draw a few examples of how I see the significance of this project. And I hope that this will be an inspiration to everyone involved with the various cricket projects and the cricket initiative as a whole in pursuing these projects, not just during the two years while you were here, but as career-long initiatives of importance for the development of the did not plan to make any uh, formal address, so you have to forgive about my informal address, because uh, um, you know, otherwise I would have been sued at times uh, if I uh, had known. But at the same time, I hope that my dress up in the informal way that it will fit um, the, the score of the cricket in which we want to be a little bit more rural, <laughs> informal, and uh, at the same time, you know, smile and working with other people. But uh, the presentation today I, that I plan to make for 15 minutes uh, uh, you know, is involved with uh, how the globalization and localization can blend together. And uh, it's often very difficult that uh, we look at globalization from the fact that you know, we have to invest abroad, we have to go abroad. But at the same time, globalization can take in many forms and shapes. And there are three examples in which I would like to share with you. And, uh, um, and hopefully it will take uh, somewhat um, um, your initiative a little bit further, especially. I to be here among all the fellow friends. And uh, this has been a great privilege to me to be here. When I got the invitation that uh, you have to speak something also, I was slightly thinking what to speak, how to speak. So, a lot of thoughts coming in. Then Lokesh sent me the topic for the day. Ah, that gave me slight, a convenient position to look into. Because it dealt with the entrepreneurship. It was about the innovation. It was about technology. And about the business. So this gave me a, quite a good interest bringing in all these four pillars together. And that too on a very strong foundation of social and ethical way. So this is, I would really compliment the IMT management, the, the distinguished faculty member. The country, we help a lot of companies to help them with the, oh, that's great, it's always good to have a college <laughs> So we help a lot of companies today in terms of getting the best talent, engaging them, training them. And I must tell you here, when it comes to ethical practice, it comes from a Greek word, ethos. And ethos means character. So it's very important that all of you who would like to be an entrepreneur here, you must do a self-assessment that every single day, am I the most honest, the person having the highest level of integrity, ethics? If the answer is 10 on 10, then you are in the right place at the right time. If the answer is, yeah, I'm very ethical, but only on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. <laughs> then it doesn't work. It has to be 100% all the time, every time. So very, very important here that whatever business you do or whatever idea you have, it has to be something, yes, it preempts the customer need, it preempts the employee need, but it has to be long term, it has to be sustainable, it has to have a foundation of trust, honesty, and you must always understand that what we do today is for the... Is for the The cultures of the world are not in conflict with each other. They are in synergy with each other. So uh, I, I really respect that thought and that's a Hindu thought as well. In Upanishads we see that man and nature and society 
we are not at conflict with each other. We are in consonance with each other. We are in organic relationship with each other. So that's kind of will form basis of my presentation. Uh, next slide. Can you play the music? As they say in India, nothing ends without music. For uh, bringing light to the myths that has been related to the entrepreneur. And I find myself fortunate enough that I have not considered any one of them while I started my organization. So that was the best thing. Thank you very much, Mr. So uh, all the um, all the dignitaries have uh, focused on several points like business, innovations, uh, social corporate responsibilities, um, compliance with the adherence to the compliances of the governments or whatsoever be necessary while running the organization. I would uh, basically be focusing on entrepreneurship because that is the only thing that drives me to this way. I mean, till this point of time. So, uh, mine is an organization which deals with the consumer internet company, which de uh, deals in FMCG, gopapers.com. So, why not start with something uh, which is very significant in change? Uh, I must start my words with the fact that in every 20 years, there's a significant change in the way the people. And I'm Pajodhar. Now, the topic that we have chosen is. What is the productivity loss to SMEs because of power shortages? Now, what do we understand? We also we, we know that electricity is one of those things which, when present, is never appreciated, but it is always conspicuous by its absence. Only when we don't have something, we understand the value. But for the affluent people or for the universities here, what do we have? We have a turnkey solution. When we don't have electricity, what do we do? We switch on the generator, and yes, the power is back. But what we are understanding is, what is the loss to the productivity to SMEs? Because SMEs, as they are, as we know, are large scale manufacturers and they need continuous uh, sources of energy. The energy produced per the energy produced is less compared to what can be obtained from petrol or diesel. So we have uh, spoken. Yeah, what, what I'm driving at is that there's a certain loss per annum in the revenues because of the loss of electricity. Yes. What would be the capital cost of your solution to, and how would that compare? With their current losses. So we worked out with a small industry called Shiva Sugar Works. It's present in the UP village mentioned there. We came to know that uh, over a period of... Peer group number, uh, we are team number four. So uh, here we are with our concept of the solar, wor uh, solar water pile. Let's start with the issues that uh, are very predominant in India today. The most important one being poverty. Now due to this poverty, a lot of people are living in extremely cramped slums where there is no electricity and whenever there is electricity, there is a lot of power there. Also, one more issue is the affordability of electricity for many of the slum dwellers. This, bring us, this brings us to our concept of the solar water bulb. Now, what exactly is, the, is this bulb? This is something, this is a bulb which is made out of water and it actually harvests sunlight to give us light through the use of water and bleach in the ratio 20 is to 1. Three. They have partnered with different NGOs and the target uh, children are the slum children. What we as a group have done, what we as a group have done, we have done a research work on this NGO and founded their challenges and we will recommend them plans for expansion in the Gurnao region. They face a challenge of lack of funds for the IT, in, uh, for the IT investment in the hardware of computers and also for the infrastructure required to educate the students. Reka was a scheme by uh, launched by central government in 2006, a very ambitious project of the UK government and uh, second only to the food security bill in its economic stature. Uh, what we did actually, we developed a questionnaire, uh, we went to the villages, we identified three main locations, uh, Uttarawa, Firozpur and Hetmapur, three villages in Barabaki district of Uttar Pradesh, 300 kilometers from the capital, the Lucknow, and we uh, we chose the, chose these. Uh, uh Where literacy is a factor, we believe in building an India, an empowered India, an integrated India. We believe in a community where villages would come forward normally to listen to a cricket match over a radio. We give the empowered them to share a common vision shared by the government. We give them a sense of belonging, and that we make them a self. Developed community. See here, sense. Thank you. And also in various communities. 
So is the same being followed by Starbucks elsewhere in the world as well, or is it just related to Thai? Um, I have no idea what. I, I think I can speak loud enough. I, I have no idea what Starbucks outside Thailand is doing, but I know like in other countries, in South America, that they start a branch, then I think they're talking about with local communities. And I think this is how the, I'm sure in India you have multinational firms coming in, and uh, you, you want to avoid having some local resistance, and uh, I think the way to overcome the resistance is through participation and to make sure that you know, that's, a, that's a benefit to local communities. I think this is a pretty uh, common strategy that we use. I mean, in order to reduce some resistance, we try to reach consensus or we bring in participation. And I think that's what uh, I think, you know, when... The ambience is completely made up of products procured from the local communities. So I, I think we going by that, uh, we can probably assume the Starbucks is uh, going on the same platform uh, in around the world.